So a couple weeks ago, I attended Scott Kelly's book tour stop in Tampa, Florida. And at the end of the talk, I got up and asked him about bubbles in space. And some of you may have seen that video. Uh, if not, it will be linked in the comments below. But I also just wanted to share some clips from the talk that, uh, uh, that were not posted previously. I'm sort of kicking myself for not recording the entire thing because overall uh, it, was, it was very comical and just super corny. And, and you know, he just, you'll see how he sort of just turns everything into like a cheesy joke and they just keep on moving. Now, I can't see how anyone really learned anything from this, but as you can imagine, the um, you know NASA fanboys and and the, the space people really just you know ate it up, and they they cheered him on, and they absolutely loved it. But here he talks about um, three different clips where he talks about the, what it's like to be going 17,000 miles per hour, uh, what the smell of space is like, and he also talks about um, his short beef, I guess you would call it, with rapper B.O.B. about the earth being flat. So here's a couple of the outtakes. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. Scott Kelly, act or not, tonight at the Tampa Theater, here to discuss bubbles in space. With seven million pounds of thrust right to your back. Now having said that, the sensation of speed is not what you might think. Certainly when you look out the window and you cross over the United States in 15 minutes, you know you're going really fast. <laughs> but the highest sensation of speed I've ever had in my life was in the uh, backseat. They have this two-seat Indy car <laughs> at the Indianapolis 500. 200 miles an hour in that thing. That's crazy. <laughs> so when, when I refer to that in the book, whenever a, whether it's the airlock or um, Two vehicles have docked together, but the space in between them was previously at vacuum. And when you introduce air and you open the hatch, that space has a very distinct smell. But even actually, at one point, I noticed it got on my arms, and like even hours later, I'm like, oh, my arms smell like space. <laughs> Call the big go, hold it. It's real cool. <laughs> it, smells, it smells like um, either, I describe it as smells like burnt metal, like you burn metal. Uh, or welding, like a welding smell, or maybe even sparklers on the 4th of July and that has a similar smell. It's very distinct, unmistakable. But it, clearly it's not the smell of nothing. You know, it's the smell of the, it, the fact that the hardware that was at vacuum, exposed to maybe the sun's rays, or, or just the fact that it was at vacuum, and the off-gassing of the material that occurs in zero gravity, has a very unique, very distinct smell that is, you know, anyone who smells it will never forget it. Hold on before you cheer him. Uh, you know, he believes that the Earth is flat. <laughs> and he uh, actually is doing the crowdfunding. Yeah. And your response was one of the most epic takedowns I've ever seen on Twitter. <laughs> what, was your, what was your response? Um, well, you know, you say it was a war. It was really only one comment. Well, it was a short one. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't really like when people, like, argue on in public like that. But I, I had to try to just, like, educate them a little bit. And I, I think, I don't recall exactly what I said, but it was, it was something to the effect that I've seen Earth and it's absolutely round. And here's a video. And I should have put the video. And then I said, you know, I think the money you're trying to raise to prove that the Earth is flat could be better spent than you just sent it all to Puerto Rico. Right after the earth. Right. It's funny. The people that play the earth is flat, I love talking to them because I always say, and sometimes I'll like protest some events that I'm at because I, I guess I smack, you know, I'll smack DOB too hard. I said, well, if the earth was flat, wouldn't the edge be like the greatest tourist attraction? And you go over and you just look. <laughs> and lastly, from your experience of looking forward, is a mission to Mars something that can be done? And what is it going to take both physically and psychologically for astronauts to 